about it and stuff. Because I was actually looking at your uh, YouTube profile right now. I can remember yeah. the Private Lifeboat name that you had, and I went on YouTube right now. I was actually looking at the video that you had. I was going yeah. over the one that you had with um, Allah and Christian. I yes. saw that. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, what do you think about that? Did you, did you have a chance to listen to it? Yeah, I had a chance to listen to some of it, but yeah. Right. Uh, definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read the MCAT? <laughs> Bro, uh, not, did you read the MCAT? I'm like, you guys are lucky. Yeah, not, <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think that's another thing uh, of one thing yeah. I should also point mm. out. That's one thing I didn't, I wasn't aware of. Programs, right? right. Those programs where you, where you already have, have awareness to them. Right. Right, so for me, it was like I was going to pre med mm -hmm. uh, early on, right? Yeah. Without yeah. anyone sort of helping me in the sense, I didn't have a mentorship for anyone, right? Right. Um, mm. So, like, mm. I didn't know about all these programs. I was first, first, sort That's of true, finding bro. the stepping true. Right, on my own. Right. Right. We got to do, we had to do that. So, it's like, yeah, that, you, can you actually bring up a good point. Yeah. Right. right. That's, that's, the, that's the main reason why I started this up. I was like, I, I've made a lot of mis I, well, I've learned a lot of things. I've done so many things through my, my premier career, which is great stuff. But I've also made a lot of mistakes that I could have avoided if I had like an upper classman who, right. um, you know, obviously you guys helped in that way. That's why I have you here today. But it's like, it's like if, if, if we could have someone like that who could like, you know, explain stuff to us, we could have avoided all these stuff, you know. Um, obviously, Dr. Calvin was there, Lydia, you know, Dr. Hannon. They've, they've yeah. all given those, like, their, their part of the story and, like, try to help us along the way, which has helped us. But yeah, it's like, for sure. for from, sure. that is from their perspective, as that's their job and, you know, in their volunteering way sometimes. But this is talking about, like, on a personal level, because it's different when it's, like, among students, like, we know, like, you know, like, personal experience, you know, it's like, that's so. That's the best teacher. Mm, personal experience. Exactly. And so I was like, I have to stop something. Right? <laughs> Just pass that knowledge on, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Um, but I feel like if I had time to take them, yeah. I would have. Um, especially okay. right, you because I feel like you you definitely want to maximize courses that you can take that will give you that that knowledge for the MCAT and also knowledge for um mm -hmm. just to take to medical school, right? Um, I, I think that's another thing. Um I mean, I feel like I would know I would know more about it once I'm in med school. But like having knowledge of anatomy and having having that foundation before you go in, right? Right. right I think right. that's going to make a big difference um, because I, I have you know I have friends that are in med school. Um, right. They're telling yeah, I'm pretty sure Christian told you about it too. How uh, they're sort of feel overwhelmed like the first month or two. Yeah. Oh, the anatomy. anatomy, right? He's going crazy, right? right? He's like, bro, this is a lot. <laughs> He's like, this yeah, is a I lot to learn. Anatomy. Yeah, like, I, feel like, <laughs> I, I think what, oh, what, right. like dropping is not an option because you. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was telling. I was like, bro, you've you've already made it to medical school. Like, yeah. it's not an option right now. Right. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, not you an wanna, option right now. Keep your head above water. I feel like mm -hmm. you definitely gotta. Um, I think like a lot of people mm -hmm. try to take it easy before med school, but so you want to do that, right? You want to make mm -hmm. sure you sort of are. Yeah. You're, you're 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 calm you're relaxed you're right. i mean also like yeah you're, you're hyped up about getting right. to medical school but it's like don't get rusty in the process you know in right. those gap years it's like you don't want to get rusty <laughs> you don't want to take right? time off and you're relaxing too much but at the same time mm. you also want to have some knowledge of where exactly you can take something into medical school and use it right, right. instead of catch up i don't want anyways anyways i'm doing let's dive into it let's have to i'm, I'm ready i'm ready you, you you ready you ready all right this? let's go let's do this yes sir yes sir this should be fun all right Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, people, to the eleventh episode of the Premier Live Podcast. Ooh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon right next to it, so that you can receive all the notifications when we go live. Whenever we upload different episodes, you can be the first person to get on it also hit the like button it helps us with the youtube algorithm so that more primates out there like you can get access to the video uh that's kind of how the youtube algorithm works the more likes we get on the video the more people get exposed to it so please do that if this information will be helpful i know it will because it's abdul we have abdul here today uh it is my honor to introduce today we have here with us mr abdul Haq saeed 
Abdul, did I butcher your name? Did I do well? What? What? what how, how, did I, how did I do? That was good. All right, bro. All right, tell me how how, how do you say it though? <laughs> Thank you for having me. For sure, bro. But how do you say your name though? I want to make sure so I pronounce it, it right. It's pronounced Abdul Haq Sayed. But Abdul Haq Sayed. Abdul Haq Sayed. That was better. There we go. But then there I go. go. Abdul is mm-hmm. Abdul is fine. For sure, Abdul. man. I'm like since <laughs> since freshman year, I'm like I'm just gonna call my brother Abdul. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But for sure, bro, it's it's nice to meet you uh, again because crazy, we just finished another semester and you were my lab instructor. Uh, it's like true of my college career. It's like you've always been there through that process. It's crazy. Um, but uh, for sure, bro, it, it sounds it, it, that's that's great. Um, you know, I'm, I, it's, it's an honor to have you on. I know that a lot of students are going to benefit from our conversation today. Um but let me give you a little intro of Abdul before he introduces himself. Because this man deserves it, okay? If you guys don't know, he deserves it. So I'm going to dive into it. Now, my dad used to tell me this always, that, uh, you see, un chen ma o hao ni a mani hum ba a sana we fiti a siye e bisase o bi in tufu. Now, in other words, it, what it pretty much means, that was an African adage, by the way, but what that pretty much means is you don't wait till crisis hits, right? Before you start crying for help and advice from the elderly. Mm-hmm. I'll say that again, because it's deep, okay? You may have to pause this video to ponder over it. It's a deep African adage. Actually, let me say a Ghanaian adage, okay? Um, West Africa, Ghana, all right? So to be specific, but this is, this is it again. This is the, this is the adage or the, or the proverb uh, or word of knowledge. This is what it says. You don't wait till crisis hits before you start crying for help and advice from the elderly. You better do it now and you'll be able to avoid that crisis from even happening in the first place. I'll say that again. You don't wait till crisis hits, okay, before you start crying out for help from and advice from the elderly. You better do it now and you'll be able to avoid that crisis from even happening in the first place. So that, that was a little Ghanaian adage and knowledge for you guys out there. But Abdul, again, you're welcome to the Prima Libel, my guy. Thank you, thank you. For that, sure, that, bro. Why, why is your dad say that? That, that was deep, right? <laughs> I know. I probably uh, won't pronounce it. <laughs> like my name. Yeah, <laughs> I bro. I won't be able to pronounce that, but... Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> take away. <laughs> deep. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And you know, I've always told myself this. Uh, if anyone deserves to be a guest on this podcast... It is 100% you, bro. I, uh, like, your for sure, man, like, this is the reason why I'm, I'm about to dive into it. It's, in terms of your help and guidance, um, like, throughout this process, you are literally, to us, like, one of, like, the OG premiers out there. I know I've told you this before, but mm-hmm. um, the reason I say that, I've probably not dived enough into it to explain why, but I'm going to tell you today because I wanted to know how we appreciate you, Um it's crazy, but your help and guidance helped us a lot during our, especially during our genetic session with Dr. Hennig. Now, oh, I mean, know. without you, bro, like, know. especially for me, the reason why, because like, for me, it was, it was a lot of things that were happening that semester, right? Um, I will, I'll, I'll try to get into that sometime in the future on this channel for guys listening. Um, but those, those were some very dark times in my life. Um, I wasn't myself that semester. Okay. I wasn't that self. My I, I wasn't myself that semester. Was, you know, was I had. Who was that? This was twenty nineteen. This was I believe I forgot in the date even, uh, but I think this was for twenty nineteen. I think, yeah, yeah. And I was I, I just wasn't myself. I do that semester. Um, you know, I had you probably didn't realize you're like who is this guy going up and down, always being busy and all that. But um, deep down inside, like I was just wasn't myself that semester. You know, I had a I, I recently gotten. Well, back there, that doesn't mean now. But uh, speaking in terms of then, I had gotten you know badly injured. I had to drop out of some very important classes. I'll get into this one day in the, uh, on this podcast on this channel. I had to drop some very important classes as a result of missing out on a lot of lectures about um, about two three well about two months. Okay, now remember a semester is about three months, uh, three four months. So about two and a half months, I was out of school. Um, Abdul, you remember you remember that you remember that I was out of school. I missed I, I Dr. Hennig. Right, right. I but I never went into the details of why. But you remember those emails? I was like, bro, I missed this exam, that exam, and you were like, 
okay, let's do something about it, you know, because it was urgent. Now, today, I I'm sharing that with you. But, um, yeah, bro, I had to drop out of some very important classes as a result of me missing out of a lot of lectures. Um, and we didn't even have Zoom at that time, right? At least it, it wasn't that popular back then. <laughs> but that would have been better, right? Like, then, uh, you know, yeah, especially with Lehman. I mean, maybe other schools had those kind of recording stuff, but we didn't have that kind of like recorded lectures, you know, stuff like that. So I didn't get access to that. So you guys can imagine almost two months, uh, two and a half months, and there was no way I was going to catch up on all the class content. And guys, without Abdul, okay, um, bro, without you, man, I, I wouldn't have survived that class either. I would have ended up dropping all my classes, including genetics that semester. And again, you know, you know our relationship with Dr. Hannon, especially you and I. Um, it was like a great relationship. So he's a great mentor to us. So it is not a knock against Dr. Hen. He's a great teacher. Um, you know, you know our relationship with him, you and I. Um, because in fact, and emphatically speaking, he's one of like our beloved, like most beloved mentors out there. But the point is, I just wasn't myself that semester. Um, and if I if 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 it had been any other time before before or after that, looking at my track record and like you know what I've been able to do so far. Um, that, that would have been a different story in terms of my grade in his class and all that, um, and in other classes in that semester. But long story short, bro, I survived that class because of you um, and in terms of how easily you explained all the concepts to me and all of us in the class, it was, it was quite obvious. I believe that was even the reason why Dr. Henning chose you to be, to be the SI for us that semester. Um, You've heard the reviews, bro, but I just wanted to give you my side of the story. You knew about, you know, me shooting, giving you emails, like getting to the, that was before final exams. I was like, um, bro, I need your help because I have to take the final exam. And also after the final exam, I have to take like the first, first yeah. exam as well. Cause I missed that too. So it was like other people were learning for funny story. I was, I was, I would see the class I had then I, was, I had all go during that time. So organic chemistry, you can imagine with genetics, genetics is like on par with the algo, bio, like the, the content bio, level, the bro, bio. you know, it's probably even people underestimate genetics, but it's probably more difficult than algo. <laughs> I'm just saying like in terms of the, the content yeah. and you know, Dr. Hannon, like he, he, his slides are heavy. <laughs> and his questions too. His Those questions, questions too, bro. They make you think, um, so, so a lot of, while a lot of students were just studying for their final exams, I was, I had just like one week to not only study for his final exam, but also to study for the first exam. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Which is, which a lot. So uh, you remember those emails? I was like, bro, I need your help. <laughs> okay. Let's break this content down. Help me to understand this. I've missed like two months of his con like class content. I took the second exam. God, God, thankfully God, with, with God's help, I was able to do one on a second exam. Um, but not to the level that I expected. So it means it meant that for me to 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 get like above a B, a B and a B plus in his class, I had to do extremely well on the final and also on the first exam. Otherwise, it would just have been a yeah. total mess. Okay, right. but I wanted to know that again. Thank you. Um, you didn't you didn't know that the deeper story to it, but no, I didn't. Um, your right, right, but your help, bro. I uh, I appreciate it. I wanted you to know that. I'm glad to Thank hear. You. Honestly, Thank you. Honestly, that's, that's one of the reasons why I went to SI. Um, Thank you, one bro. of the benefits of SI uh, and just tutoring and helping students, um, right? That role, I, that's one of the most validating things that I felt about it was just getting that feedback from students, helping them understand it. And I, I don't think Ooh. it's just me just teaching it. I think it's also the students as well, because you, you guys, no one's forcing you guys to come to SI. SI was never a part of mm. Those watching was not thing. compulsory, right? Dr. Hannon was like, you know what? Abdu is a great resource. I'm recommending for you guys to go to him. <laughs> not everyone did. 
But you know how right. these things are. Uh huh. I, I was like that too when I first started at SI, right? It's like not everyone did, schedule, right? Mm. Um, and so going there is sort of it takes it takes that that dedication. It takes that right. Like you you you're sort of chasing for you like mm -hmm. you you're going out of your way to go mm -hmm. and you know get this extra help and this Twitter. It's like you don't realize how helpful it is until you actually right. <laughs> you miss that, right? You learn. That's why I gave that that lesson. I, you know that 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 African adage at the beginning, that Ghanaian adage. So if you forgot it, go back and listen to it. All right. But the point is, take advantage of resources offered to you. Okay. That's like Dr. Henry standing in front of the class first day. He's like, I recommend you guys go to office hours, go to Abdul, <laughs> and we're like, you know, sitting in the class, you're like, ah, I probably don't need that. You know, people say I probably don't need that. I know that. You know. Uh, but yeah, it reflects in your final grade, right? If you end up getting a C or D in the class, then you learn your lesson. <laughs> but uh, for sure, bro, I uh, I wanted you to know that because with your help, uh, I'm actually going to say that, but I was able to get uh, above a B in his class. So I appreciate that. It was not easy with all, like I'm saying, I, I wasn't myself that semester. I'm not even like, you guys know me. I'm not a bragger or anything like that. I'm very, very humble. I don't, I don't talk about my accomplishments. It's not the reason why I started this podcast. We'll get into that later on. But, bro, I wanted you to know that. Uh, so thank you. Because without you, <laughs> I would have I dropped, I would have had to drop genetics as well, which would have been a disaster because would have meant that whole semester would have been a waste. Um, mm. And I, uh, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. You pulled through and you did it, man. Of course, I appreciate it, bro. You're welcome. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, of course, I, I've been I've, I've given a long intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, probably the longest intro so far. But um, yeah, I uh, so so I've given a long intro. A part of your character, not 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 as a whole, you know, as a whole as you are as a person. But uh, I wanted to tell our, our listeners about yourself, especially for those who don't know who you are, Abdul. Because again, I told you, like you. I leave it. Okay. At least, at least among us, we know that you're one of the OGs out there. Right. But for students who are listening, I'll leave with students or yeah, you know, tell us, tell us who I'm doing. All right. It's, it's funny thinking about myself as the OG. I, I, I don't feel like that, but I guess I am. You are. Uh, I guess yeah, I am. You are, bro. You are. <laughs> so everyone, my name is Abdul Haq Sayed. Um, as before said, I go by Abdul. Uh, I am a Lehman uh, graduate with a double major in biology and, uh, and psychology. Sure. So I, uh, I am pre-med. Uh, I'm in the same game as you guys. Uh, apparently the OG at it. But <laughs> 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 if I'm deserving oh, that title, man. we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, just Lehman graduate from Lehman, uh, right? Been in the CUNY system my whole, um, you know, from all my undergraduate career. Mm -hmm. uh, started off at your college when I first uh, graduated. I born and raised in Rochelle. Um, to immigrant parents from India, right, that came from uh, poverty backgrounds, um, basically, right, living in New Shell in the suburbs. And then uh, once I graduated, didn't know I was pre-med, right, kind of had an idea by the time I was uh, in junior, senior year. And then um, when I start, started off with York College in Jamaica, Queens. And oh, then wow. I, no way. That, that, was a, that was a commute, man. Yeah. So you oh. transferred? Oh, bro. Mm. I had to okay. transfer. I had we, to we get, we get, So, so crazy, crazy. Talk. How long was the commute to school every day? Commute mm -hmm. uh, on how it was initially. So yeah. I, I didn't drive at that time. I was, mm. I was, you know, NYC and NYC life. Everyone knows yeah. subway. And yeah, bro. The reason I asked that is because I, I can relate to that because I, uh, so I, I used to say Mount Vernon, right. Um, and, so New Rochelle and my friend, because I mean you were right, yeah. right, so right, you understand right. that. Right. Yeah. And I uh <laughs> for for about three years of my college life, now in my senior year, I don't have to do that anymore. Uh thank God. But I was in Mount Vernon back there, and three years of my college life, every single day Abdul. Two hours in, two hours out. Okay, that was my commute. So you can imagine four hours of my day gone. <laughs> okay so yeah tell us about that you get it in an early class so yeah my, oh I my god tell thing. me about that like eight that, that, no, no seven thirty hours. classes <laughs> oh yeah. god it was worse I, I had i remember once mm. i had a 7 a.m 7 a.m class that's crazy 7 a.m class that means that i had to Ooh. be up and out I, I had to be on the train mm. by 5 a.m by five so you gotta you had to wake up like probably three o'clock to get ready Right, four four o'clock. If, right? if I woke up on time, 
<laughs> most most often i was i was late oh um, my god right just just that commute was crazy it was four hours mm-hmm. so two hours going two hours coming back like you said yep. right i had to, I had to grab the i had to grab the bus to go yep. to the train station the train station right. another hour 30 minutes right because we're, we're going all the way down the sixth train and then catching the e train for 51st for and imagine like you you start you well, you first of you leave you leave the house early in the morning to to go to college to classes and then you leave you leave you leave really late to to go back home and you imagine like for me it was buses right i, I didn't because my brother and this like the trains don't necessarily go that's like out of new york city but it's in new york state um so it was like the buses and like the traffic bro especially when it snowed i don't i don't remember i don't know if you remember the day that like they were like oh, oh it's just gonna be like two inches Sem- of snow today you remember 20- that day right december 2018 <laughs> you remember was, was, was this I in think- 2019 I, I think this was in 2019. I think that that same that's <laughs> was it 20? Nah, I think this is 2019. My freshman year, this does not happen. That did not happen. I think it's 2019. I remember. I they was were like, oh, you oh you remember? Okay, and they were like, oh, it's just gonna be two inches of snow today, and it was it was crazy. Like no no nothing was moving. <laughs> it was gridlock. It was gridlock trap. Everyone was locked in, uh, bro. Locked I had to walk from. Imagine so you leave you leave it when you were so well. So you, you understand this better. I was at Lehman by this point, right? Right. You you understand this 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 better than anyone. So I walked from Moshulu Parkway. You see that four train that that last yeah, stop. Yeah, I know what it is. I walked from all that from all that way, like from all that whole place, all the way back to Mount Vernon, bro. You can imagine like the distance. So I, I don't even know how you Yonkers, do that. Through Yonkers into Mount Vernon, like through the casino, like around the casino, ah, the uh, race uh, Yonkers, the race right. way, yeah, yeah. the Empire City Casino, all the way down to Mount Vernon, bro. And you know what's sure crazy about it? <laughs> I, to this day, I'm angry at Lehman for, and if you're listening to this, great, because I'm angry at you guys because that day, next day, they were like, come back to class and come back to school. Like, can you imagine, like, after such a thing happening, they didn't even like give us a break, bro. I think that was like a right. Tuesday or Thursday. I don't know what day it was. It was Bro. either Tuesday or Thursday. So if they're uh, listening to this, please don't do if this happens again. I'm advocating for students who are behind us. Please don't do this to them again. Lehman, Lehman, Lehman faculty, if you're listening to this, please let the president know. Uh with all respect. But um, Kitty Chancellor at ooh, him. At ooh, the Kitty ooh, whoever, whoever yeah, please. How long did it take you to walk that? Let me ask Bro, you this. I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't have track of time. My whole goal that day was get home safely and fast so they don't get frostbite. That was I because I was frostbite, bro. Like my parents were worried. They were like, I know everyone's parents were worried, but I'm just giving my perspective of what happened that day. Probably everyone has a story of, of, of that day. I know you guys remember this, but um, bro, it was crazy. Anyways, that was the segue. Let's let's get back to let's get back to this. You talked about <laughs> um I, it took me about, six hours to get home that day, bro. Bro, I uh, whew, I was sitting in the bus and like <laughs> funny story, um, like the you know the bus that leaves Lehman, I believe it's a twenty, the twenty bus it's to Yonkers. So normally I'll take the twenty and then I'll take the seven from Yonkers to to Mount Vernon. Which seven goes to New Rochelle, right? So, um, funny thing, uh, we sat in the bus from Lehman. Oh, we were like, oh, it's gonna be gonna get home safely, or like quickly. People are mostly back when the bus, mind you, the bus was already filled because buses weren't moving that much that day. They literally stood in the way at Moshulu Parkway and they blocked the bus. They were like, you're not <laughs> leaving without us. Like, <laughs> But the bus wasn't going anywhere because the bus was locked in. It's full. Like, Every, people are standing in the, the in the walk, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, I left my car. I parked my car. Oh, I, was, my I, was, I was parked. In, so I, was, I drove that day, right? At this yeah. time, I had a car. Okay. Um, so it, it's a 20 minute, normally, it's a 20-minute ride back home. Right. My, when I when we got out of biochemistry, our professor, we were waiting for a professor, uh, Dr. Clement, to okay. actually come to teach the lecture, right? So we're the whole class is waiting there because everyone's there. It's a 6 p.m. class. Everyone's Ooh. waiting there. The snow is oh, starting. So you guys were and waiting. Like she mm. never got to. So we're we're waiting there. We're there. And right. an hour in, we get an email from her saying she's stuck on the bus. She can't make oh, it. Man. We're like, oh my god, we just wasted our time. Whatever, right? whatever. We're trying to. We're like, okay, well now we're done with our day. Let's go home. I, I think I'm thinking it's a 20 minute ride, whatever, just basic snow, right? Because the news coverage on it was like, it's not that serious, whatever. Right. Yeah. Get outside, get in the car. My car is stuck in front of the Lehman parking lot on that street for about a good three hours. Oh my God. Yo. Cars were not going nowhere. Cars were mm-hmm. going up 
the opposite side of a one way <laughs> streets that were one ways were going the other direction like Oof. um it, it was insane it was insane I, I, at that point i figured that i'm not getting home anytime soon with a car right so i parked my car to hydrant i knew that i wasn't getting Oof. a ticket because right because there's i mean no they understand way. like right like, <laughs> this is the, this is the city's fault to give me a again ticket. if the city is watching please this is new york city okay right. so right. um greatest city in the world like don't let this happen again okay like right. Right. this is you should be prepared ahead of time for so this, basically okay? i have to walk all the way to fordham from there take Ooh. the metro north and get home at two in the morning yeah i left my car at, at in front of lehman right right that was a mess. Yo, was a mess crazy video. thing. They wanted us to come to class the next day. They wanted us to come to class. And we had to be there. Um, I won't say the name of the class, but it was one of those clicker classes. Mm -hmm. And we had to be there. And you you know, like, Sounds like chemistry. clicker classes, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't want to like say, let's, let's, not, let's not go in deep into <laughs> it. But <laughs> let's let's like, see, I don't yes. blame the teacher, whoever that was. At that point, I don't want to refer any deto details because like, we, we, we give respect to like our faculty members because um, mm. they're all great, um, you know, in their own ways. But I, you know, I like, because I mean, she's not probably uh, he or she. Oh, dang. You see, you, oh, you gave it away. Oh, oh, oh I got to oh. stop talking. Right. I don't want to go. <laughs> no, but I will say this. She wasn't because people know this or she, she, I guess she isn't really in charge of like um, the, the schedule right um so i am giving her the benefit of the doubt um that probably because it's, it, it's kind of something that comes from the you were talking about like the cuny chancellor yeah the so it's the like, right it comes from top to bottom it's like they're right. the ones making the decision not the professors themselves right 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 like, but if, right. if she's listening i you know we love you professor i don't want to mess you right now right but you know you know we love you um if, if this ever happens again I, I would love for professors not just her but anyone who was forced to come to school that day for the professors to understand because it, it must have been difficult for the professors as well to get to school you're just talking about your experience yeah, she, she didn't make it at all she was exactly coming. exactly yeah. so so that that goes to my point to say that it probably wasn't their fault that they wanted us it to come to school. i don't it think was it like was compulsory. right i don't think it was their fault right um i think students like b being a faculty member now right so exactly uh, right. right so you understand, understand right? like I mean, we get that. <laughs> like uh, being on the right. other side now mm -hmm. like i mm -hmm. understand like it's it, how students look because exactly. I, I was just I, I see how students right. look, look at as like, professors being in charge right. of everything right. but it's not that way at all um exactly, it's, it's exactly. So, stop, right yeah yeah so it was more like a, a trick what do they call it trick down effect, pretty much right. from the top to bottom um right. so yeah uh, we beg our cuny uh chancellors and uh and, and our, our leaving presidents and, and and so forth please don't let this happen again okay um uh yeah anyways i do let's get back to today's topic okay that that was uh Whew. anyways those were some uh some crazy those times but, uh, <laughs> crazy times, all right yeah. let's start with this you talked about being a double major why 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 did you go into double major why, and you also transferred to lehman so tell us right. about that experience yeah so um so double major so i i have to first start off with how it was before transferring because I, I feel like the transfer sure. led me down the double major for sure for sure so going off to your college initially right um at that point i decided that i was going to be pre-med um right i um i had so basically um my father had um one day coming after coming home from high school right mm. um and usually my family ha tends to have like meals together before we go to our self or my dad's cell phone store so my dad has a small cell phone store business at that time and um this was something where um all my, like I, a lot of my time went into you know um as a kid trying to help my family business you know help mm. me out the store. Uh, my uncle used to also work there as well who was uh just 15 years older than me so he's pretty like um right, he was the youngest of all my uncles and so um he was more of a friend than actual uncle right uh just someone you could talk to hang with uh share anything with and so uh for uh, for him mostly as well as just working there and, and help my family um i would you know go i would dedicate a lot of my time to the store right and so um just giving you a background uh, in that sense of like one day yeah. after going home right me, uh, for a family meal before going to my dad's cell phone store mm -hmm. uh, my dad en ends up um going to wa everything seems normal dad ends up going to wash his hands um and then passes out in the bathroom Jesus. right so um because all we heard was a, th a thud i go in to see see him lying down conscious um right um just laying on the ground 
I'm not sure what was going on at that mind at that moment. Uh, I'm just freaking out. Like what's going on? How did this happen? He was good a couple minutes ago. Um, right. You know, quickly call my mom, like, you know, what's going on. She doesn't, um, you know, she doesn't know what's going on as well. Right. Uh, she's a homemaker, right. Um, she, uh, housewife, uh, in traditional yeah. family. Um, so she didn't know what was going on as well. So we quickly called the ambulance, you know, take him to the hospital. Oh my um, God. I, I wasn't sure if it was a heart attack or what was going on. Right. You just, at that age, not having any knowledge of what's going on with that situation, right? Um, right, you're, you're just thinking for the worst, and you're right. just you know, right. you're full, like the bread maker of my family, my father, mm. my dad, mm. um, is just mm. in that vulnerable position. Someone to look up to is just you know laid out basically, right. um, and so just going to you know going to the hospital, finding out um, doctors doing tests, evaluations, um, you know, finding out what's going on, tests ever test insulin bags. Um, finding out that he was diabetic and Mm -hmm. uh, severely diabetic. And that's um, what sort of caused him to actually go ahead and faint. Um, Right. So that's something that experience of sort of not knowing what was happening. um, And also not understanding how diabetes, right. Cause at that time I knew what diabetes was like, you know, um, everyone calls it sugar, right. Uh, You have high blood Mm -hmm. sugar. Um, I didn't understand how serious it was until I saw, you know, my dad basically passed out from it get um because his BP dropped. Um mm. and he ended up he ended up just passing out, uh, crashing on the ground. And so that's that was I feel like that was the pinnacle moment of me sort of curing myself to pre-med. I was always curious and wow. I, like always um or I always had this curious nature to me of why things work a certain way. Um mm. scientists were always something that was wrong to me. Um right. I was always good at I wasn't that focused as a kid. That's a different story. Um but I was right, right. we we'll get into that. But but that moment right there was something that really really got to me just mm. understanding how you know what happened to my dad and how diabetes and just understanding the like, realizing sort of the lack of like health awareness in my family. Um because wow. of Indian Indian diets are a high carb diet. Okay. Um, like, and that is similar to 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 my African heritage. Like we lead a lot of carbohydrates. Um, and let me let me rice. let me let me right let me right right rice. We got fufu uh, with all the plantain and the cassavas and all that. I, I will say this. I think I well, this is the history behind it. We used to work a lot on the farms and all that. So like high carb oh, diet yeah. helps with right. Like you eat it in the morning. You don't have to eat till till night. Um, but then like you know all the colonization and all that thing happened. It's like, it's probably similar to your story, but it's like, now it's like, we are still in that kind of diet because it's part of our heritage and our tradition okay, passed out. Right, right, right. It's like, we don't work as much as they used to. So mm-hmm. we are not burning those calories. So then it ends up in, you know, diabetes and all that, but right. that is, is it similar to your culture? Like, you it, know? it's exactly, it's exactly like that. Um, right. you know, the, the foods that were available then at that time, in that part right. of the world. Um, right. and, but, um, you know, especially if you're, um, uh, coming from a impoverished, fam- impoverished mm-hmm. family, right? Where um, you didn't have much. My, fa- my, my parents came from humble backgrounds. Um, right. They had large families, um, 11, 11 siblings, both of them. So I have a huge family, right? Both my parents have 11 siblings each. Yeah. Um, so, and they were they're from hum- humble, pov- uh, impoverished uh, backgrounds, right? And so um, just the history, like uh, a lot of these communities have just those, whatever foods they have, right, to eat. Um, and without looking really into the health consciousness, um, right, the, the health benefits and the health um, costs of right. sort of certain, certain diets and right. lifestyle, right? right? Mm. Um, and so, like in, our, in my in my household, for example, we we grew up eating rice like two three times a day. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, there's certain meals where we have the rice is going to be the main part of that meal for breakfast and right. then lunch would have been rice and dinner um dinner and then later on when I, when i was like when i was like going through my teens um and then, you know we're, with, with teenage years where you want to work out and you want to get healthy and right right no way, but i get yeah. pumped <laughs> right exactly, exactly. right, that, that's, right. That's, where, that's where health started um that's where i started cutting off carbs and uh, like okay. stop, stop like sort of following my family's like right um, not like not too much of it i I would throw in salads i would add in i would avoid Mm. meals but then my family wasn't doing that because for them it was that's what they grew up on and they can't Mm -hmm. go without it right right and so that's where i understood um like that situation where their diets the way their lack of knowledge in like you know um in these in these aspects um really costed them and almost cost me my father right in that sense um right it could have been worse it could you know um thank thank god it wasn't but 
um, just, just seeing that lack of awareness in my family and then also just the health effects of, you know, what was happening to my dad and how right. medicine sort of was able to cure it, you know, with insulin and even the story of insulin and how, right. you know, how we have it now with, you know. With so, so Abdul, this, this has got to be type one diabetes, right? This is type two. This is um, type two, type, rather. Type, type one would be more mm -hmm. so um, auto, uh, autoimmune. Autoimmune, right? right? For, the, for the kids, right. You, exactly, when you're born. Right, 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 right. Makes sense. Right. Um, and then um, sure. uh, the, the big one is type two, which is going mm -hmm. to sort of be uh, where, where, you where you develop based off of your, you know, what you're eating and your physical activity, et cetera. Right, and right. That's, right. What, that's what most people are tend to sort of, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a doctor yet. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but, but, yeah um, but from what I learned so far at Lehman and stuff, right, um, type two is going to be the one where individuals are going to sort of um, develop where by having these, um, um, these sort of uh, right, lifestyles um, right. and diets. And um, especially if you have a genetic predispos predisposition for it. And I believe, um, especially in the South Asian uh, community mm -hmm. in India and mm -hmm. stuff, um, diabetes is a big, is a big, that's a big thing, a right. big problem. And there right. is a genetic predisposition for this. And so um, just, just, just that right there. Um, right. You know, right. After that experience, after, you know, my dad's being treated with insulin and how he got better. Um, mm -hmm. And also just the, how my mom doesn't speak much English. Right. Um, right. Just, um, Again, traditional family. Uh, my dad was the one um, that was working, right, getting mm -hmm. ready for our family. And then um, my mom was sort of she did her she she did her best to learn English, but it wasn't um, she couldn't really communicate well. And so for for when we're at the hospital, I'm the one that the doctor sort of talking to and explaining things, uh, trying to explain to my mother, but then she didn't really understand. Um, right. And so um, just being there and how the doctor sort of took into the, those. Um, cultural differences mm. right when in, in explaining and trying to understand mm. uh you know what happened and uh sort of try sort of in, sort of giving the knowledge to my family in terms of like what happened with you know explaining what diabetes is and mm. what caused it and these, um mm. and sort of the factors that went into it um i think that's what's really put me up push was the first arc or the seed that put me into pre-med, right? Right. Um, so you've pretty much answered my, your, your white medicine, pretty much uh, that right. arc. Um, now the thing is, so you took them, so, so it's that two diabetes, meaning you, you had to purchase those expensive, like insulin pumps. <laughs> um, right. Or get, get insulin, right? Um, right. Insulin levels and get insulin. Mm -hmm. So I'm about right. to ask you financially, how is that to, you know, to the family so luckily um, uh insurance right has been yeah. um, ha had covered that so that was an issue there um okay. at that time like we we're getting um right with with, with, with um my family condition we we're getting like uh governmental insurance right mm. so um that that would that helped there um mm. so that, that that was fine right in that in terms of that but um other forms of insulin probably you, you could probably get better forms of insulin stuff like that and that's right. where price and right. health health disparities come in Coming to play, right? right? Um, okay, right. Kind of exactly, play. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this, because <laughs> health disparities, big topic, big topic. You know, because it's pretty much minority communities not having healthy foods around right. them, right? right. Uh, that's just a micro, a microcosm right. of that whole health disparity thing. But in terms of di diabetes, um, I know, I know, um, um, Professor, uh, 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 Professor Manso. Right. Because he's a big diabetes, like that's his research area. Right. Mm -hmm. So with his mammalian physiology class, like he always hit on it. He was like, anyways, if, if you're about to take Professor Bunsen's class, get ready. That's that's the toughest biology department class you ever gonna take. So okay. get ready for that. Okay, <laughs> that means, okay. where does yeah. that come from? Genetics. Ooh, bro. Nah, Professor Bunsen's exams are like on a whole different level. I'm gonna say that. His class is tough. <laughs> but um he he talked a lot about that because he it was um i got to know this from monty hop in my freshman year um but he really dived into the health disparities thing right where he's like it's it's crazy how deep this runs but when it comes to diabetes it's like minority communities it's more like fast food joints all around like the mm -hmm. cheaper foods which are normally like not that you know healthy as as you mentioned they're like a lot of carbs and all that and then, like, you know, in the rich areas, it's like all these like whole foods, like all oh, like the vegetables, like in, in abundance. Here. Right. Ugh, right. I see that here with Riverdale and mm. where we are in the Bronx, right? Mm. Um, 
Mm. Even I, I know when I'm going out for lunch or trying to look for food nearby, I know better to bring food to Lehman because right, I, I've, right. there are days where I'm trying to buy lunch and I can't find something healthy to eat. Mm. Um, right? Mm. You only have like <laughs> right. chicken and like Jarrow. Oh carbs. my god! Right. right. Um, Right. It's, it's my hope. It's my hope that the, the upcoming generation, we can change that, you know, um, whereby we can actually uh, have a positive effect on like these these policies and stuff. Um, you know, uh, and I think that's, know, that's, that's, it's, that's, it's, where, that's important for yeah. us as pre-meds mm-hmm. uh, to bring this knowledge into our communities, um, mm-hmm. make them aware of like, you know, the diets that we have and stuff. Uh, right. Although they're, you know, of course, culture is important, right? We right. want to respect our cultural heritage and where we come from. Um, but if we can sort of balance that, right? If you can balance Correct. it and substitute certain things, we're, we can keep elements of it, right? But at the right. same time, we um, understand, like, okay, like we know better, right? Like you talked about, like the rice uh, 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 thing, right? Like right. you started adding a like, little vegetables to it, you know, and they, like you know, limiting it, or like, exactly, exactly. Like, limiting the portions, all that, exactly, right? So I guess you agree with this, whereby it's like as permits, it's that even if you're a freshman, you're listening to this, you know, you're privy to this information, you can start doing this. But it starts with, I, I do, you agree with this? It starts with the family, right? You can start right. with your family, like in some more area, people around that you can influence, where like you can. Start talking to them about you know healthy life choices and all that um but for sure bro i uh let me ask you this i know it's gonna get a little personal but how is how is pop doing now he's he's doing good but um right um he's still on um insulin right so no, he's doing okay. a lot better now um right, right? Had, and I've, I've been working with him and managing it and trying to sort right. of help help him with, right. with diets and what to eat and mm-hmm. uh, recommending what things to eat right Just, right based off my research and my understanding of it. Right. Um, right. Like, so with type two diabetes, I remember professor Monso talking about a lot about, and I think you agree with this a lot about um, diet, but also with exercise, right? Cause it, right. It, with, uh, especially with um, intermittent fasting, that is a huge thing. I literally wrote, wrote my, uh, my final paper for its class on uh, intermittent fasting. Um, I did like a whole review on it, but it's like, that's that, that i think that i don't know if you know about that but it's it's a great thing where it's like if if he can start that it would be great like exercise and also an intermittent fasting you know i think that would be uh, a big great option it's, it's right great and i feel like everyone should be doing it at some mm. part of their day right um with their with um with the benefits that it provides right for for an individual i feel and that's something that i've actually been trying to work on myself where i'm trying to do intermittent fasting twice a week um, wow right that's right? impressive I, I've been noticing differences in terms of like how I feel and my, mm. my energy levels and yep. uh, your energy levels. That's a big one, bro. That's when he was talking about it in the class, you're all like, what is this man talking about? And he was like, try it for one week. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was a big difference. That was right. a big difference. Anyways, Abdul, uh, thanks for sharing that. Now let's, let's dive into who was Abdul back in high school? I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm still back in high school. Ah, that's, that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I went there, right? <laughs> I was. You, you were there. Um. So I yeah. was someone that was always like, like I said before, I was always into science classes. Um. Right. So, um, I always had this. Um, right. I was always like into in, into course, but I wasn't always. I wasn't the smartest kid in class. Um. Right. right? I, I was. I was. I was always naturally interested in what we were learning. Wait, about. really? Abdul wasn't what what. What I, 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 was, I, I, I had a pause on that. What <laughs> I was, I was not you really. That right? I was, okay, I was not. I'm listening. Um, okay, and I felt like a lot of that had to do with right, um, just just things about me that I had to figure out, or you know, how, how to study, how to learn. Um, right. but for me, science classes were the ones, and also a lot of self doubt, I guess, in a sense as well. Mm. Um, right, um, where. Uh, science classes were, for me were ones that were really interesting, but then when it came to studying outside of school or getting yeah. distracted or not having that environment, that's where sort of like I wasn't really too focused on. I was in, in for high school. I was more so into enjoying, like, you know, um, taking the classes, trying to pass, right? Doing, yeah. uh, trying to do pretty well on the regents and um, with, with getting the diploma. Ooh, right? the regents. Anyways. But I feel like at that, at that point, I don't think I was studious at all. Um, right. And that's something that I had to learn how to do when I went to college, right? Uh, just right, not being studious right. and not, right? Because um, my family didn't really push me, right, in that sense. Um, they wanted me to do well, but they didn't ever really push me. So it's more so me versus me, right? Right. Because um, uh, it's like they've none of them have really gone through that experience, especially in the U.S. So like you were right. the first person going through that. It's like right. that's the child, right? 
And that, that, I feel like yep. those were a lot of the challenges there, right? Not having mm-hmm. that mentorship and not have like, even though my parents, you know, of course they were exactly. supportive, but then at the right. same time, how supportive could, were, could they have been when um, they couldn't really, right, um, have exactly. a confidence themselves, right, right, right. Um, right. And right. so, um, right, they would, they would, you know, wherever they could give me input, they would give me input. But right. ultimately, I felt like um, I was on my own there, right? And so, uh, um, you know, but then after that experience, pre-med, um, right, um, mm-hmm. with my father, and then that's when I took AP Biology in senior year. And that's Ooh, where I actually, AP Bio. <laughs> that, that was my first, that was like, that was Ooh. when I actually like took bio and yeah. um, I, I wasn't the A student and I, I ended up getting like a B plus, right? Yeah. Um, because my whole like um um because of senior year right senior itis whatever right, it is. Senior, right. Ooh. Right. So, <laughs> we the ogs feel that too You're like, i'm done with this like get this out of the way <laughs> right um, but basically right, taking it, right. Um, that, was, that was like my first exposure to like mm. bio not region level bio because we had that but right. actually like, like uh, bio, college right. level bio right. learning about learning about the um, systems right learning about right. um diabetes as well that's where we learned about learning about how the kidneys work le- learning about the pancreas um and right. um uh, in cellular biology that's where I actually that's where i actually fell in love with biology okay um right i had i had something that pushed me towards taking that class but then when i actually took the class i actually fell in love with what I was learning yeah. right uh and so that's when um right going to college that i already decided that I was pre-med and then um it, I, I felt like the ap bio knowledge was going to help me Right. And I, because I like biology, right. Chemistry, um, I enjoyed it, but I, I, I never really studied that, that well for it. Right. Um, cause th- I wasn't that serious, uh, mm. in high school here and there in certain years, but then you know how high school is. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, so I, I went with biology and then that also okay. made the most sense to me. Cause I, I, at that point, like I knew what the MCAT was, right. But mm. I didn't really know what it was. Uh, I knew about the MCAT, but I never knew, never looked into like how the um, exam questions are, how the exam is formatted, et cetera. Right. I just, I just knew long exam and I knew, um, right. The subject, the course subjects that are on it. And so right. for me, right. like, like, um, at that time, I, I felt like biology made the most sense. So right. when I applied right. to college, um, a friend of mine's also applied there too. And okay. so we both got in and that's where we decided to go to York together. Okay. Okay. And right. that's where I studied pre-med. So that was uh, high school. Biology. Right. That, that's, it's nice to bring up the biology point because I, I, it reminds me of, I think we skipped over the, the double major thing. So you right. were, you were a biology major with, with a double, a double, oh, initially with a double major in what? Initially I was just a biology major. Okay. Going in. And then um, at, at your college when I was there, right? Um, yeah. That's when, like, I got my first experience of college. How okay. it is. Um, so you changed it to what? So I no, that's I was a biology major. So I went in. Okay. I've had you taken AP Biology in. So like you graduated as as in what major then? Let me ask that. So I I, I, I I transferred two years into my um, undergraduate career. Right. So I, so, so really, I mean I, I mean I mean this this um this this past semester. I, okay, so I am a, I am a double one major. So I'm biology and psychology. I'll be one second. Yes. Sorry, that was, that was just family, um, you know, like, you know, you know how no kids, kids are. Um, okay, no so Abdul, Abdul, what, 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 um, I, I was asking what, um, like you graduated Lehman as like, as what major, I guess. That's what I wanted so to get. Biology at. and psychology. So that's where I, I had you went psych. Okay. So All Lehman right. is when I got the mm-hmm. double major. Um, okay. All right. So I guess what I was trying to get to is why weren't you a chemistry major? I've had this question before. And I always tell people, like, it's funny, my chemi- like you, you, your chemistry friends as well, like for your mates, um, they always say this, like, bro, we, we hate bio. <laughs> as Zico was talking about, it, and they all say that. And I'm like, yeah, we, we don't hate chemistry that much, but it's just like, we love biology more than we love chemistry. <laughs> that's why I'm a mm-hmm. bio major. But why are you bio major or why did you major in bio? I guess that's what For me. I mean. Biology made the most sense in terms of uh, just mm. understanding living things, understanding disease, right. understanding, right. Um, mm-hmm. um, and just understanding just also just the appreciation of just 
to the complexity of the human body. Right. Um, that's in biology, AP bio was what, what really got me hooked. Right. Okay. Uh, and so that's why I picked the biology major and looking at the MCAT and what I knew about the subjects that are on it and what's what subjects I'm learning by medical school, biology seemed to be the most um, overlapping. Like right? it made the most sense. I, and especially when you go into it, medical it school. Had the, I had the most overlap with it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, mm -hmm. there's different branches of biology. Right. But right. I felt like biology is what, uh, what we learned in um, what medical school was sort of right. Found, uh, exactly. Which one do you were a, a biomedical science concentration, or which one did you choose? So I, I did. The, I did the biomedical concentration. Biomedical science. Nice. Right. Okay. All right. So Abdul, let's let's dive into research. All right. We have a lot to talk about today. Whew. All right. Let's get through this. Um, right. Research. Research. Tell us about your experience in research. So research was something that was tough for me to get into. I don't. I don't know how it is. So that's one thing I never did at York. Um, because I never really made the relations with professors and how to how to get research. Right, this mentor I didn't really have mentorship then either. Right, mm -hmm. and it's um, when I came to Lehman, where right I took I'm taking Orgo, so this is me taking Orgo now. Right, I come to Lehman, my first semester Ooh. Lehman taking Orgo, with um, right and right. Um, this is where basically right uh, um, I finished Orgo one, and then Orgo two right is when um, I'm also look, looking into my professors and what they're doing. And that, okay. well, I, I understood that I had to do research opportunities, right? And so I remember the first time when I tr actually transferred to Lehman, yeah. I went to Dr. Ch uh, um, doc the chair of the biology department. You went office. to Dr. Cheng too? Okay, it's, it's funny you bring Dr. Cheng's name because... I went straight to him. You, you know this. I, I just did an episode with... <laughs> I just I just published my episode with um, Naomi and Tasman. You know Naomi. I mean, you, you yes, guys are mates. Yeah. And they, she talked about, she especially, she talked about also going to Dr. Cheng's lab and like she didn't know what Dr. Chen did for his research. <laughs> I, I and she 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 learned like that. That was a lesson for her. So I it's funny you bring his name up. I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like, I, I didn't I just knew oh, that he was the chair God. of the volume program and I was trying to find research opportunities on like the lean website, but yeah. I couldn't find any, right? So mm. I was like, okay, because like, like you see him on the biology department page. So I was like, maybe right. he's the best person to ask. Right. So I remember right. the first time I went to his office. <laughs> Um, I see right, Dr. Cheng, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, 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 for some reason, I thought he was like a medical doctor. So I remember when I first went in, I was like, hey, Dr. Cheng, how's it going? I explained who I was, come from Lehman, yeah. and I asked him, um, you know, asked him about research opportunities, try, make a small ch chat with him. And then I asked him for the medical doctor because I, I, was, I, I was just ignorant at that mo moment. I didn't do my research, whatever, um, my background, right? Um, on yeah. looking into him and what was going on. And just to show, like, I didn't know much about research then, right? right. Um, and how to get it. That's, I was just Tell me about your experience with him when you went to his office. What was that like? Uh, basically he just, uh, you know, then, you know, you know, the the door, right? you know, uh, the door, right. You know, the door, you pulled uh -huh. Dr. Chang on me, introduced ourselves. And then, um, basically he told me to check the Lehman website. And then that was, <laughs> that didn't go nowhere. Right? That didn't go anywhere. He's like, I'm busy right now. Go check the Lehman website. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> right. so, oh man. That's what it was. And so that Dr. Was, Chang. just want to put it so out. I was like, okay, maybe I won't He's find this stuff here. So right, uh, right. I was like, maybe I won't find a uh, research, right? And then after taking Orgo, um, yeah. Orgo one, right? I got, an, um, I did well in the class with Dr. O'Connor, and then um, Orgo two, right? Um, before, I t uh, right? I, because I like the professor so much, I was trying to see what, uh, like when you walk down Davis Hall, right? You see all these research posters that, that are there, and then I saw, and then I saw what Dr. O'Connor was working on, right? And then I saw how he's doing hydrogels for wound dressing, right? These, these are going to be three D gels. Mm. Um, biomaterials that are made right um using uh, so the ones i'm making over here are with these uh, uh, with this um synthetic po polymer right so we're we, we're using uh dextran sulfate and we're using polyethylene amine um mm -hmm. and we're electrostatically cross-linking them right okay and then we're making so that and we end up with a 3d polymer um and then a gel that's linked electrostatically and then right we're adding antioxidant and antibacterial properties to these wow. gel. and you're right? saying to heal wounds like faster for wounds and especially what, what i saw in the research paper right yeah. on, on that poster was yeah. diabetic ulcers and so this oh, goes back to diabetes. that's crazy and so this is something this was this was that something whole that, story like, up, right it's like right, the whole story arc right. and so this is something that really meant a lot to me right understanding mm. diabetes and i had mm. having experience with it right and so um after I, I reached out to him and he was, he was saying that he was looking for someone right um he had an opening i guess people graduated that his form, the former lab the former lab research um researchers that were working in with him right from students 
they went out to grad school and he had some vacant spots. And so that's where um, after taking Orgo 2, right, um, and basically this now I'm thinking about him at that um, after right. the semester. And that's where I reached out to him and that's where I got into the lab. Nice. He got that, you know, I had this report with him. I did great in his classes. Yeah. Uh, he knew me as a student, right? Um, mm. And so that's my... Um, so that was your pathway to it. And in terms of like, you did well in his classes. You made sure to stay on top of your studies. Got great, great grades in, in his class. And that, that, that's how you path or on that path, you know, to get into his lab. And he really helped me out because the thing right. is, I wasn't even a chemistry major and I'm mm. doing research in the chemistry department. Right. Right. Which is, an, which is an, an, an anomaly, right? Cause, which is, which is right. sort of unorthodox because usually mm -hmm. uh, you have students that are majoring in their major that are doing research Correct. in their department, right? Right. Um, and so this was something that um, really meant a lot to me, right? I got, I got research, right? It wasn't in the same department, but yeah. um, it had, had a lot of overlap, right? In chemistry background, um, chemistry ba uh, based, right? right. Um, and so um, that's where I got the research opportunity uh, by taking a class with him first. It was a research class, right, uh, where okay. you get credit for it, um, like one credit, I believe it was one or three credits, but then you write a paper on it at the end of the semester. Wow. And, and which is, is that one of those uh, seminar classes or? No, it's, uh, it's more of a chemical investigations class okay. where basically okay. you're, you're, it's like, it's like with the equivalent, the bio equivalent of like uh, independent studies or um, a right, research right, class, right. which is about right, right, honors right. research, right? right so that's right. basically what it was. Okay. Um, the chemistry uh, version of that, right? The mm. research um, class where you're right. doing research with the professor and at the end of the semester, you're, you're like, you're writing, submitting a paper, right? On mm. what you did. And so this was on, on a project. So this wasn't just a one semester project. This is a project that I'm still working on now. Um, right. And we've got, we got, we got published for, uh, two projects basically that are linked that have to do with the same um, type of gel, uh, similar gels, right? Um, and so this one, with this one, this one opportunity led me to have a publishing. Or if not, I have my name published in the paper. Woo! And now we're working that on- That is a shout out. And now we're yeah. working on getting a second paper out. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So yeah, let's off. go. So, yeah, my, bro. So basically, just having that report with him, doing well in his yeah. classes, reaching out to him, and him, and honestly, him giving me the opportunity um, is is what got me Absolutely. into the research. Right? Kudos, man. Kudos. Not a lot of people get your names. Shout out to Dr. O'Connor. Right. Amazing, amazing yeah. mentor. Um, I've been fortunate right. to have him. I've been fortunate yeah. to have him and um, Dr. Henning, as well as uh, other members, other faculty Absolutely. members. I'm, Absolutely. In my time at Lehman, that really yeah. helped me out. Right. Um, this is something I haven't done at York. This is something I've done at Lehman where I've, you know, this is what I honestly, I learned this at Lehman, uh, right. This is, right? Where making, making those connections to professors, going to office hours. Cause like, um, right. And just uh, office me, hours, was, right. Mm. Cause coming to college, I, that's where I was completely different. Where for me, if you, right. if you, if you took a class with me, you would know I'm sitting in the front of that <clears> class <throat> um, or participating. I, this is, I, I do. I do. This is a great segue. Let's go straight into the, uh, personality uh, uh relationship with 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 professors let's go straight into that yeah you can go on yeah so so like like yeah. i said like in, in high school i wasn't that focused whatever um and then right. finding out that that you know um and then just trying to get into studying and stuff like my my, my experience at york was not great i uh, just okay i was distracted i also found out that um i um i have adhd right uh and so i learned disability right so that 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 caused me to sort of not do well and struggle more than others mm -hmm. um and then it was at lehman where i basically learned how to you know control it basically get, get treated for it um and also my aware led me into um also the psychology major right where right. Understanding, understanding you know psychological issues like ADHD, right. um learning disorders and all that um yeah. right um, the interaction between the biology and the psychology of someone, yeah. right? And so uh, basically studying myself in that sense, right? Um, right. And so that's what really pushed me into taking that psychology major and learning about myself and also learning about, you know, mental disorders because that's something that even in my community, um, mental health isn't really um, looked on, um, mm. right? Or, or, mm. or actually like considered. Right. Um, it's sort of, right, it's sort of, seeing that something that doesn't exist or nuisance, whatever it is, right? right. It doesn't get much attention. I mean, it's been changing, but um, I feel like it wasn't great. And just even like getting my family on board with mm -hmm. uh, my situation and uh, yeah. understanding it, right? That was something that really um, also struck to me, struck out to me, right? Just not the lack of awareness and just like the, the physical health of someone, but right. also in, 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 in the psychological health and mental like health. They go, they go together, right? Like right. One, 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 one benefits the other. When one right. suffers, the other suffers, right? Right. Right. And so that, that honestly, those two things what really pushed me into the major of biology right. and, and picking up psychology. 
Right. Um, and so now me as a student, right? Um, yeah, now, the relationship thing, right. Yeah. Right, I had that. I, I had this relationship where I wanted to learn. I wanted to get better. My my GPA after uh, York. For those of you who may have had a bad grade or had bad grades, um, I had a I had a whole year of bad grades. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, basically, I also had a, a family situations going on where this, our family business closed down, etc. Or having to work there. Um, yeah. Right putting hours in we're not being able to focus on class and those things combined um honestly led me to have a really bad um 2015 was a really tough time for me yeah. um and so um that's where i had unofficial withdrawals um a couple of w's as well right yeah. um taking class during the summer and then uh, while also trying to fast and making that four-hour commute where i'm not getting oh. sleep well and oh. then all this going on um, just led me to have a really bad GP. And so when I came to uh, Lehman, I knew I had to get my act together, mm. especially if I was pre-med. I was looking at I was looking at the GP of these medical schools and these average GPAs, right, of students. Yeah. Um, and I saw that my grade my GP was not great at all. Um, I think I left with a 3.0 from um or two point something, two point seven, two point eight from uh from New York. From New York. And then when I got to Lehman, yeah. I knew I had to change my change my game. Um mm. I had to get it together and then I'm glad to say, you know, I, I turned it around completely. You uh, did. Now I understand why you were like, I'm going. Because I saw you, I was like, this guy has his things together. He's like, I'm going for this pre-med thing and I'm going to graduate strong. And so now I understand that, you know, thanks. Thanks for thanks for being vulnerable in that sense. But uh, so that, yeah, exactly. for sure, I had, bro. So I had to learn my mistakes, too. And then that's something that pushed me, honestly. Um, yeah. uh, instead of giving up, I was like, I have to push harder. Um, you know, I just have to show medical schools, you know, that that wasn't me. That was something I was going on, et cetera, right. but right. everything's a lot better. And so that's where I made it. I, I made a promise to myself to get, um, a 4.0 every single semester mm. so, since I first entered Lehman and, um, and I've been trying to do just that. So, uh, in that process, right. That's where I understood that I had to build these relationships with professors, um, mm. for extra help, for seeking advice on how to prepare for exams, how to explain certain topics, um, mm. you know, asking the elders for advice when I need advice. Like, going back to that age. Go, back, go back and listen to it and get back uh, here. Uh -huh. <laughs> going back to the Ghanaian adage, you're exactly mm. right. Yep. Um, that's something I experienced because mm. when I didn't do that, I was, I was struggling, I wasn't doing great. And then that's what honestly turns it around and also made learning really uh, just the environment and that connection with my professor is just so much more better. Um, I got to know them. They got to know me. They got, I've got to learn how to, you know, get around certain weaknesses and how to approach topics and understand them. Yeah. Um, right. And that honestly led me to get, um, build these relationships with professors where yeah. I can get recommendation letters now and they know me so well. Um, and also you know, going to SI and also understanding how, yeah. you know, um, it may be a best, be, better SI leader, right? Mm -hmm. Taking these courses, um, how to explain to students. Exactly. Let's dive into SI and TA stuff. Yeah. Right. And it's like so your it, volunteering stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I mean, just going above and beyond that um, in mm -hmm. terms of like helping students and being dedicated to helping them because, um, like like I said, Dr. Henning, Dr. O'Connor, um, Dr. Williams, um, all these individuals, uh, Dr. Happney as well, all these individuals, and also Justine Blau, uh, uh, she was also a memoir professor. All these yeah. professors actually really helped me out, um, right, uh, and helped me develop myself right. uh, and g give me uh, the ability to be where I am. Yeah, 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 bro, for sure, man. Uh, whew, wow, that was a... Uh... That was inspiring, Abdul. I, 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 like you sharing that. I know someone is sitting somewhere listening to this. Whether it's on the bed, listening to the podcast, on the chair, listening to it on the train, bus, and they're like, "This is inspiring," you know. And uh, thank you for sharing that. I believe there are a lot of people listening going through the same thing, and uh, they they can relate, you know. And uh, the fact that you were able to pull through it and you've been successful in doing that. This is the reason why I wanted to have you on today, you know, to, to be a source of motivation for others. So thank you for sharing that. Of course. Thank you for sharing that. Um, funny thing, <laughs> you and I are professionals. And uh, <laughs> when it comes to being professionals, there are advantages and disadvantages to it, to having such a personality. Now, I want to ask you, what is your advice for students out there uh, when it comes to being a professionist? 
you know, what are the advantages to it? And then let's also dive into like, what are the pitfalls that can come from having that kind of personality? <clears throat> so the perfectionist mentality. Ooh, see so, that, 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 that needed that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. Let's get into it, bro. Let's get Cause you can it. imagine basically once, once I sort of left, you know, um, York and came to Lehman, I had to sort of tap into that perfectionist mentality. Exactly. Um, and even I feel like parts of it were always there for me. Um, but then I really tapped into it at Lehman. And so, you know, getting, so trying to do the best, trying to get every single question, right. Like for me, like it wasn't like, um, per personally for me, like for me, whenever I took an exam, my goal wasn't to pass the exam. My goal was to get every single question, right. Mm. Uh, like I, I, I didn't care if I was on the past exam with a 90, um, right. For me, it was the qu individual questions. Like I looked at the exam as individual questions mm -hmm. and I wanted to get every single question, uh, question right. Um, or right. for essays, I wanted to make sure my essays were really well, or mm -hmm. if I was studying for, uh, studying for the exam, uh, I made sure I hit every single topic, right. That, that was covered. Um, and honestly, mm -hmm. at times it would give me a lot of anxiety because right, yeah. going back to the spectrum mentality, you don't know what's going to, what you're going to be tested on. Well, you don't know what's going right. to pop up. You don't know what's going to uh, like, what you're not including, what you're not touching. So like, right the amount of hours that go into it that mm. it's exhausting right because you're just dialing so much into something um and focusing on getting everything right but then what i learned from having that mentality is yeah at times at times it's it's perfection isn't always ideal mm. um Right, mm. we we like it's and it's also not possible, right? Like it's 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 helpful because it will get it will get through you, it will get you through that process and help you to like get to the point of success that you want to get to. But mm. then you also have to learn through that process again, going back to the advice about learning from elders who have gone through that process, and it's like you gotta learn how to balance that, you know. Mm. It's not like always being hot, 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 hot. It's like I'm going for this, like da -da 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 -da. it's like you gotta, you gotta know when to cool down, right? So, so let's dive into that. Like, what are some of the pitfalls, bro? So, like for me, for example, um, I remember like, for, like going back to that commute story, right? With four-hour yeah. commute, um, <laughs> going to your college, taking that morning class. I remember that this is me taking intro sociology. Um, mm. I, there was a certain time because of that commute, right? I wasn't getting much sleep. I was sometimes getting late, and if I was late by five minutes on the train, I was late for class. And if I was late for class, I probably missed the quiz that was at the beginning of class. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, um, I it led me to have certain W's were in my control, and I unnecessarily took certain W's because I felt like I wasn't getting that A. Um, right. Sorry about that my text no problem, no problem, no problem, bro. yeah i felt like i wasn't i wasn't um i wasn't getting that a and so or i felt I, I scared myself into thinking oh i could have been better i could right. have you know and so like to say my gpa like early on before my, my gpa was already um this before my gpa sort of got ruined um but um and the situation sort of went out of control but at that early on, I started started taking W's and stuff because like that perfectionist mentality. Oh, I want A. I know I can get an A, right. but um, let's so let me drop this class and retake it again, mm -hmm. right? And so that's something where that perfect perfectionist mentality sort of got to me, where I was unnecessarily dropping classes okay. um, because of an assignment where I could have just pushed harder on other, um, or ex ex I reached out to the professor and explained mm -hmm. to them the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, to see if they could, you know, understand and you know, be, right. be, be, more, be more tolerant in that sense. Um, right. and be um, right. Also, with certain papers and stuff, um, you know, just putting too much, just re like, for example, if I'm writing a paper, constantly trying to restart it because I'm not happy with a certain sentence or being too fixated on a certain paragraph rather than looking mm. at the whole thing. And I think the pr professional mentality gets, gets, um, the downfalls of it is basically where you're putting more effort into something than needed to get the job done. Right. You can, you can, you can get the uh, job done with just, just um, you can, like, you can do a good mm. job and you get the job done and get it out the way. That's um, deep. That's deep. Right. With, yeah. with just, just the bare minimum, but then just over perfecting it. If you have the time for it, if you have the time for it, then that's great. But mm. if you have other things to do as well, other responsibilities, other classes, other, other um, assignments, that's where you have to learn how to like, is it, is it sufficient? Is it fine? Do I head off the checklist? Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because perfect can, is not really uh, perfect. It's not, it's not realistic, right? Like we try realistic. to be perfect in the ways we do, but perfection is not, 
and, and there's human different things. ways of being right. perfect. That's also right. the human thing, right? right. Um, your right. idea, like for example, going back to mm, uh, see that's deep. The presentation, <laughs> that's right? deep. Right? It just hit me. That's so, deep. Mm. My presentation. There's certain things that may be that may be different than which right. what your idea of perfect is. Right. Right. So right. It's, it's like you're learning. perfect in your own way. Right. You can right. you can try to strive to be like someone, but it's like you have your own uniqueness, right? And so it's like you can try to you know although we all try to be perfect. You can be as close to perfect as possible. And that that closeness between that range is your perfect, right? Mm -hmm. It can be right. different as right, right, right. That's deep. That's deep. Right. And, and just so just That's understanding deep. like basically like um right. not 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 putting too much effort into a task where mm. it's un, it becomes unnecessary and draining. Um, right. If it gets the job done, if it if it gets a great job done, that's good. Um, but then if you can like you know, again, like do a great job and then also just move on and do uh, your, what, what other tasks you have, then that's a good way to manage it. Um, mm. But only when you have time to go back to it and then edit it again, right, whatever, whatever it is, and put that extra time in that you have. If you have that free time, then go ahead and do it by all means. Um, but yeah, I feel like just, just the idea of just sticking to perfection all the time, is, 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 it's, 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 it's not feasible. I feel like, um, right, it, it, it may right. be a goal, um, mm -hmm. It may be a strive, but then just you have to know like just your limits and your um, and just the flexibility. Your limits, right? your right. limits, um, your right. limits. Right. We all have limits. Know yours and uh, don't try to go above it. Know your limits and what work within it. Right. And what's so this. It. Right. So like, I might I might segue this for you. Mm. <laughs> you know, Mike. So like no with problem, the one bro. thing with the MCAT. Mm. Right. This was something that was like, bro. Like, I'm just gonna stop you right. Here. You know why? Because the whole session today, you just been giving great segues, bro. It's like you're making my job so easy. <laughs> you just dive in. Let's go, bro. Let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. How about that? The MCAT. Absolutely, bro. Let's dive into the MCAT. The one and going back to the perfectionist mentality, starting with the MCAT. Um, mm. one thing I've learned is it's okay not to know something on the MCAT, and that may be the ideal strategy. Right. Because if, for example, on an exam, right, when you don't know the question, especially on the time exam, and yeah. it's right, where you can't move forward until, or you have to get the questions done. If you don't know a certain question, right, and this is something for a, a tip for this MCAT for individuals, right? Um, if you know certain topics that you, you, you know you don't understand, you try your best to understand these topics, you just can't understand them, or this type of certain question that you know it always throws you off, rather than putting in that extra effort and all that time to try to get the answer when you know you're, you're not sure about it and you know like you you probably won't get the question right yeah. um if you know you're gonna have to skip it skip the question mm. right save that time because that maybe the next question next couple questions could be questions that you know the how to solve mm. right mm. and so that's something where, where i really deep like that um the, the the perfectionist mentality sort of got right. me Right. Um, it, it got me to delay my MCAT and then mm. when, I'm, when I'm taking it and also like yeah. how to prepare for it because like I had this like 525 mentality oh right like, every question right and all you know like for, you, took you know what's funny I'm gonna bring up this example because I, I I went through this especially when I was prepping for it um <laughs> it's funny uh I know you relate to this the calculator stuff right so mm -hmm. and the MCAT, no calculator, right? I know. So like when we're prepping for this, I know you can relate to this. I, you're gonna talk about it, but um, you know how like in, in, in college, like the 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 various examples that we get, we're always trying to get like the perfect exact answer, especially right, when exactly. it comes to math, right? But it's, it's it's and that's where the perfectionist thing comes comes in. But on the MCAT, it's a whole different ballgame, right? It's all about approximations. <laughs> approximations. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get comfortable with that. Right. Approximation is being comfortable with your answer and mm -hmm. uh, being confident with your answer. And so that's, that was, I, I feel like those two things were yeah. the reason why the MCAT was just like uh, pre preparing for it and like where the perfectionist mentality sort of comes at you, where right. the MCAT, the way it's designed, um, especially mm -hmm. so this is where a pitfall would, would be of having that perfection mentality. Yeah. Um, the MCAT is so different in that sense where questions the right answer may not be clear it's, it's intentionally right. clear right? it's intentionally you know, clear right like it may be the <laughs> best answer but it still like has some sort of vagueness to it and so you're not right. comfortable with that answer choice because it's not it's it's not like clearly explicitly saying the answer right mm -hmm. um or um how to calculate the question like math questions and scientific questions on the mcat where we're, we're doing uh, calculations right trying to find right. the frequency um 
of a, a light ray or basically doing Snell's law or doing um, acid-base reactions and yeah. trying to calculate the pH, all right, or find find the pKa, all right, yeah. um, or trying to find find um, the the equilibrium constant, right? Um, right, right. Trying, trying to calculate these things, these calculations on the MCAT, um, they're without a calculator, mm -hmm. and so it, uh, the MCAT is going to be um, right for for test to be successful in the MCAT, you have to learn how to, how to approximate. Exactly. how to do it and so you're exactly. not using you're not using 6.02 times 10 to the 23 there you go Papa got to his number right you're, you're doing six <laughs> times 10 to the 23. exactly Instead exactly 9.8 for gravity you're using 10 and so mm -hmm. like if you have that perpetuous mm -hmm. mentality it bothers you exactly it's, it's, it's like it's like i feel like it was a exactly. barrier for me right um, right right and right. it's like they're trying to test you on that try to so you you know I, Thank you for bringing that up because it's going to help a lot of people if you're studying for the MCAT or, you know, have it in your future. I do hit on a great point in the fact that you got to get comfortable with not being perfect. We are all perfect in our own ways, as, talked, uh, as he talked about. Um, and that is most evident on the MCAT, where it's like in order for you to get comfortable with being approximating stuff, you've got to be comfortable with not being a perfectionist on the MCAT. So uh, I do Thanks for those jars. You know what? I feel like we should like open like a uh, an MCAT like program and charge people for this. This is like free like podcast like gems, bro. Like we just put in information. Oh my god, the premium life book, bro. We should be charging for this. But anyways, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but this is good stuff, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. appreciate you talking about it. Let's talk about smart MDs. Smart well, MDs. our 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 great favorite program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah bro let's talk about smart mds what is your let's talk about that experience with that what can i say about smart mds um i honestly didn't know about smart mds until i took genetics with dr henning mm. mm. and that's that's when i found out about smart mds um and the fact that lehman had a program like this where york didn't have it mm. i never I, I never knew that you know they would have programs like this and the biology department where right. um dr henning and dr williams were putting their own time into you know what's funny their own time, bro. Their own time. But you know what's funny? Dr. Henning came up with a smart and decent name, right? I I I I I heard about. And it's funny to this day, I still don't know what like the full acronym stands for. <laughs> I don't know if you do. Do you know what the, the full acronym stands for? So so smart MD, the acronym mm -hmm. is SMD, which is okay. smart MD. I don't okay. know if there's a larger name for that. I there is a larger name for it, bro. Dr. Henning really? came up with it. This man, this man is just a mad genius, bro. I don't know how he gets all of these stuff, but there's a name for it. I'm going to ask him later. Um, it's, it sucks that I don't know it right now. Actually, you can continue talking. I'm going to try and Google it and try to see if I can Wait, find I, a name. I, I didn't know that. I, I, I knew SMD, there is. which is basically there smart is, bro. MD. So smart MDs is it. not just like smart MDs. There's it's a, like there's a long name. It's, it's an acronym. acronym as well? Bro, oh my I'm God. telling you, this man. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yep, that's how you know it's Dr. Henning. That right? I'm a, Dr. Henning. Right? That's him. Like, yo. <laughs> he's, he's one of the most creative guys I ever. Oh uh, my god, bro. Visuals I came I came across. Um yeah. his questioning style, the way he thinks, his creativity in terms bro. of like um even the, the amount of hours and the dedication that he has to bro, genetics, man. the course, um, yep. helping students, helping yep. smart MD students. Mm -hmm. Um just I, I think him uh yep. and just just his work ethic that's something that i really look up to bro um, and appreciate and so mm. smart md is just you know being a smart md yeah is, I, I, can, I can't find it i can't find it bro i can't find it. but you, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna ask I'm well ask we should him. ask him right we, but there is like i talked to lydia about this uh, uh, well, uh, well, well dr williams um we gotta we gotta we gotta put some perspective on her name right um so i talked I talk to dr dr williams uh, I, you know, I don't know why Dr. Wins wants us to call her Lydia, but I was talking to her the, this, this, this other time. I know she's listening. But um, I was like, Lydia, why do, why do you allow us to call you Lydia? Like, she, because she's like, you know, preferably let's just call her Lydia. I'm like, but I think it's more like a camaraderie thing with students, uh, which we appreciate. But yeah, let's put some respect on her name. So I, talk, I talked to Dr. Williams about it. Um, and I was like, you know what? And she was like, "Yeah, it's it's a name, you know. It's, it's a long acronym that he just he just came up with. I don't know, like this, like uh, Archimedes. Who was it that slept in the? Uh, well, he wasn't the uh, ah my physics. Let's go. He wasn't like the shower or something like that. He just came out with the with Eureka, the, Eureka with the Eureka moment. No, that yeah, was Archimedes, Archimedes or Archimedes. There we go. 
There buoyancy. we go, bro. I can use principle and buoyancy, right? Man just wakes up from his bed and he can't start with stuff, bro. Dr. Henry is just, he's different, bro. I mean, he's the, anyways, let's, 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 okay. So let's move on with, um, Dr. Henry, if you're listening, I, think, you're I, I, th- I just I wanted think, to know that. Yeah. Damn. Like, okay. Yeah. Dr. Henry, yeah. yeah bro. We got to give him his props, man. We got to give him his props. Um, him let's talk about your, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and Dr. Calvin as well. You know, all three of them, Dr. Calvin, Dr. Hannon, and uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, I mean, we are, I guess, eternally indebted to, you know, you guys. Uh, I, I, did, I yeah. genuinely feel so in my, in, in my, in my case. I genuinely feel Absolutely, so. Absolutely, bro. Um, I, uh, we, we appreciate you guys so much. Now, let's talk about your, your, your experiences working as a, an adjunct professor, um, a layman, especially since I just took, you know, molecular value with you for the lab. So let's talk about that. What, what's been your experience so far? So that experience is something that Dr. Um, Henning, again, helped me with, uh, mm-hmm. right? Giving, giving my name out to the biology department after graduating and seeing my years of experience with like working with SI yeah. um, and put, uh, putting me on there. So that was um, honestly something that I was looking for. Like, that was like the next step, right? Um, mm-hmm. After SI, just helping students, try, trying to be someone that tries to work with students and help them in understanding the material and uh, just being on the other side, I guess now, right? Yeah. Or now I'm done being a student, but now I'm going into teaching um, the material. And so, honestly, it's it's been a great experience. Uh, I hope we great. didn't bother you too much as students. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, man. But bro, second, you're great. You're great. That's is, always, man. I mean, this is my second semester as an adjunct. Um, it's it's been great. Um, yeah. right. Uh, in terms of like being able to help students, understanding them, teaching the material, and then also just um. Right, just 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 being there for students, trying to work with them and helping them, trying to uh, um, you know, not just yeah. pass the class, but also giving them the resources and also the knowledge, right, uh, mm-hmm. to, to take this knowledge with them to go on to their respective careers, uh, if yeah. pre- which majority of them are pre med, right. Um, yeah. So it's it's it, it's been it's been a great opportunity, um, and it's like one that also touched into that, um, you know. Where it sort of like SI gave me this opportunity because SI was yeah. something that made me comfortable with like you know going ahead and teaching uh, right. and tutoring students and um right. the, you know just presenting stuff. Uh, I feel like that's something that I wouldn't have done in high school. I never would have imagined myself to be someone that went into teaching or tutoring, mm-hmm. and that's something that just really changed right um, as I sort of went through undergrad and became comfortable with learning. Like I, even in York, I, I don't think I would have ever imagined myself to be a tutor or a teacher. To be a tutor or teacher, right? Um, mm. Yeah. I, I don't think that's just something I would, I would have ever imagined. Right. And so the fact that right. I am one, uh, right, I am doing that. Um, that's something that, again, Dr. Henning and Dr. Williams, yeah. uh, who put in good work for me. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's also a testament to the culture of Lehman, which is, which is great. I, uh, the faculty and students. Uh, but you know what? We got to shout out Professor Swain out there. Swan Absolutely. Out. Yeah. Big shout out, bro. Big shout out. She, she's, she's great. I just... Yeah. Right. I have all just positive stuff to talk to talk to you about her. Um, she she was great. I mean, and she is great. Um, her class, I mean, the just the the flair and the energy which she teaches with is just it's amazing. enthusiasm, so, right? 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 She's right. so enthusiastic about about her her, her field. Um, shout out to you, Professor Sway. Um, okay, Abdul, Dio schools. What's the deal with Dio schools, bro? We got to talk about it. You and I know that there is a whole stigma that comes with it. Um, but especially for our freshmen and sophomore students, explain to us what's the whole philosophy behind it and what is your relationship with that subject? Let's dive so into that. This might be, uh, so um, coming into college, mm. I didn't know what DO schools were. I didn't know that they existed. Right. I thought it was just MD, MD, MD. And it was until I took um, anatomy at your college uh, where i actually ran to my professor on the train or we we're taking the train together where he explained that there are deal schools out there and that's my that, that was the first time i actually learned about deal schools um mm-hmm. and so i never knew that deal schools ex- existed before that moment so i, I hope you know n- the people that are watching this or subscribers right um that are tuned in uh, to pre-med life vote know about deal schools as well as mm-hmm. the schools that are out there right mm-hmm. um so with DO schools, um, I didn't, I don't know much about, um, I do know the basics of the philosophy of like, uh, right, um, right. osteopathic manipulation medicine, where the right, right. um, basis of disease could have been a neuromuscular. And so going mm-hmm. into 
the 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 manipulations that they're doing right, um, right. in the way of uh solving right uh, certain con- uh, d- diseases yeah. and conditions right yeah. um just just through that osteopathic manipulation can right. help right like and they it, talk about it in this way such as it being like a more holistic uh approach to 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 right. to medicine i guess right, right. and and that w- that's one of the things about the deal philosophy is that right. holistic approach to medicine right, right? right. um where I feel like with MD schools, right, you're looking more into, um, right, the um, allopathic exposure. You're looking into yeah. the disease and, and treating the disease. Mm-hmm. Where DO schools, you're looking into the patient like as preventative a medicine as well. Right. right. The preventative medicine, the parts of mm-hmm. it, um, preventing the disease, right, right, on top of curing it and trying to, right. Right, um, right, in so, a more holistic way. So let me ask you, is that what, is that what make, made you interested in, in like, DO, that, that DO path? Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, I, that's what really brought me into the, the deals. Um, got me interested in the deal. All right, going right. back to the diabetes story, where um, if 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 the, if my parents were aware of, if the community is aware of, you know these, um, you know the diets and the, these physical um, conditions and how to sort of avoid them by changing up their diets, right, and uh, things that they could prevent. Right, that can that can stop pr- chronic illness. That can help alleviate chronic illness. Right, um, instead of just taking you know, instead of just taking the insulin, on top of that, changing your diet, change uh, incorporating exercise. Right, mm. um, I think that that really struck out to me. Right, um, in terms of like the deal, the deal approach and philosophy, because I felt I felt I, for me, I, I feel like I'm someone that has this personality where. If there's a problem, right? If there there is something that needs to be fixed, that needs to be uh, done, instead of fixing, um, yeah, fix the problem, but also fix the cause of the problem, mm. right? Mm. So for me, I feel like um, with the allopathic medicine or MD schools, that's where I, I don't feel it as it doesn't sound as satisfying to me, right? Okay. Where if I could prevent, if I can prevent that, yeah, um, if I can prevent the the, um, the condition from happening or mm. doing measures to avoid it. Um, as 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 a as a reinforcer on top of just the uh, treatment for it, uh, right. I feel like that would that would that would make a more substantial difference in individuals' lives and um, right, right, their right, health. Right. And sure, so that sure. really, really stuck out to me. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a great segue, another great segue, man. Today's today's flow is just amazing. Um, this this will be our longest episode because it's just a lot of things we we are talking about, we've talked about and we still have to talk about. So we just point Abdul is gracious enough to just take time out of his busy day and just share with you guys all this knowledge. So please take notes. Okay. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet or hit the like button, I mean, I don't know what you're doing right now, but that's please do. Okay. It, it will help you now. And I, and I hope you're benefiting for this. So give, give us a like, give us a like and subscribe. Abdul, great segue. Let's, let's talk about the medical school application process and uh, all of it. Personal, what is it called? Personal statements, mm-hmm. right? Uh, letters of recs, all of it. The floor is yours, sir. Let's talk about it. Let's go. Um, application process. So the application process starts off with the day you start taking college classes, mm. right? Um, GPA. Getting get get. I mean, GPA isn't everything, but it's it's it, it, it's a part of your application, and so you want right. to do as well as you can, right? Grade wise. Um, Recommendation letters, right? You also you also mentioned that as well. Great. Um, that goes back to that reporting with the professors, keeping in touch with them. That's not not only that going to help you with your GPA because you're going to the office hours and making connections with them. It's yeah. also going to come back to giving you recommendation letters as well because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you can get individuals that, that can talk about you uh, that know you outside the classroom, not just inside the classroom, right? Um, right. So that's there as well. And then um, personal statement. Personal statement is the big one, the tough one. Mm. Um, Right. Uh, I, I, the first time I actually started drafting a personal statement was with Dr. Calvin. Um, right. So shout out to Dr. Calvin helping us uh, work on it, especially in, uh, in the NSS 352 class. Right. The pre-med right. Uh, class. He right. was the one who gave us the assignment to write a, a personal statement. And Great also, class. Great right, class. Yeah. If anyone at Lehman can take it. If you're Lehman, take it. <laughs> yep. But you you want to you want to yeah. take it right after um, <laughs> you had all these pre, um, prerequisite courses done or. Um, right, with right. Dr. Dr. Calvin's permission, because you need his permission to take the class, right? Right. But right. Uh, just getting that, uh, getting that personal statement, just having these experiences talk about, right? Personal statement is your story of why you want to do medicine and what um, experiences you've had, right? Um, and what they've 
what what you've taken away from them on your journey and in your journey to medicine, right? Um, and so for me right now, personal that's what I'm actually working on for my application process. Um, it's 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 not only is the MCAT preparation, which I'm still doing right now. Um, but it's also going to be the personal statement, which I'm trying to draft up actively at the moment. And that's where the perfectionist mentality, again, going, going back to that, um, yeah. where I, I have like multiple dr- first drafts of personal statements because right. I keep trying to start over and over and over again with different ideas. Right. Um, right. right. So like, that's another thing you want to work on personal statements. Uh, I feel like students don't put that much time into them or they don't mm. really get them. Mm. Um, if, if you have, right. If, you know, if, if, if if it's a, if a pre med student watching this from Lehman, um, talk to Dr. Calvin. Go to him. See, there you go. Uh, go, go to those workshops. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Um, meet with him to talk uh, to work on your personal statement. And get his advice. Right. Um, because like you, that's something you def- If med schools are definitely looking at your personal statement. Yeah. Um, right. So it's not just transcripts. It's all, it's your application as a whole. Right. Um, they they want to know. Okay, not only can you pass these uh, past med school, but they also want to know what type of physician are you, what type of person are you, uh, right. and they're trying to bring in different personalities into that class, right? Um, so what what things set you apart? What things make you unique, right? In your experiences, and these are things you want to also mention in your personal statement. Mm. Uh, what things you've done, um, right? Um, right. So that that's that's where that is. Um, yeah. With the interview process, I'm not too I'm not too sure about that because okay, I haven't right. had the year. Right. Maybe maybe we'll have to do a second part to this. Bro, we I- we've got to do this. Uh, when 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 by God's grace, which is gonna I know He's gonna give us that grace when we all both of us make it into medical school, which I know we're gonna we're going to make it. Um, we will have a chat, a chit chat. Really? And by then, like it will be face to face. Y'all y'all look 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 forward to that. It will be face to face. I gotta go visit Abdul in, in his in his medical school like dorm. We'll do that and then we'll go live. Maybe and, I'll uh, start a podcast by then and then I'll have Let's go, bro. Yeah. Let's go. We looking forward to that, bro. That's see that's <laughs> so, that's some prophecy, bro. Speaking it out, man. Like let's do that. We do a merger and that'll be great. That'll be great, Abdul. I've right. told you, like, I see you're someone who I know I know you want to go into the MD path, but I've told you this before, whereby it's like you have such a God-given gift of teaching, uh, of, of, of just like explaining stuff to, to students. And I told you before um, that I see you as someone that one day you're not just going to be like, you know, a DO, an accomplished DO, but like someone who may even end up teaching uh, other DO students, right, um, in the future. And if you can fit this in, you know, like a started podcast or a YouTube channel, bro, that, that'd be great. So that is my challenge to you. Like, let's see in about two years from now, Abdul, two years from I, now. I want, I want us to be talking about this, uh, but in a way of, of, of you having a YouTube channel, that'd be great, bro. You, you, um, you and you and I side by side. December wait, 20th, bro. 2022. All right. There we go. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. December 20, 2023. 2023. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. So uh, that, that is my challenge to you. I know it's going to happen. Um, and uh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Let's, uh, Abdul, what is your general advice as you bring this to an end? Uh, this, is, this has been a fun episode. Um, a long one, but I believe students appreciate, appreciate the, the, the depth that we've, we've dived into. What is your general advice? Uh, for permits out there from first many year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. What is your general advice for them? General advice would be timeline. Keep mm. a timeline. Uh, plan out what you want to do, right? Um, in terms of when you want to take the MCAT, when you want to start medical school, um, and, and learn about how you have to basically take the MCAT, right? Um, if you want to start medical school right away after college, you want to take your MCAT basically in your junior year, right? Um, that way you can start right after college. Or if you want to take a gap year, that's up to you. But the thing is, you want, you want, you want to basically plan out your, your next years in advance, um, that's the first thing, right? Ha- set the, when you should be taking these courses, right? The the pre- um, prerequisite courses, and then ha- when you can t- when you have time to study for the MCAT, when you can fit in volunteering hours, mm. right? And all these other experiences, um, just so you can take your um, so you can graduate as well as take your uh, and get into medical school when you want, right? Um, at least um, have an ideal deadline for that. Otherwise, you'll end up delaying it, um, um, and then 
you may end up graduating and then taking the MCAT later on a couple years after you graduate, right? Um, and so that's one thing, unless you, unless you chose to do that, um, right, which, is, which would be intentional, uh, I would say that um, to plan out this stuff in advance, mm. right? That way you sort of, even, even, even if the schedule may change, right? Even if your timeline may change, um, that way you have something to work with, that you set up these goals for yourself um, and, these, um, right, and these deadlines to meet. Another thing would be to basically meet with your pre-med advisor, mm. with, uh, mm. uh, get to mm. know them early on, not mm. till later on, introduce yourself, introduce um, where you are, uh, what your goal is, mm -hmm. and, um, and get, 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 the, uh, get that individual's input, right? If it's Dr. Calvin, if you're at Lehman, yep. um, great. Um, if it's someone else at a different school, right? Same thing, just, just reach out to them and find out. Um, another advice would be um, make sure you're studying adequately for the MCAT and get idea of how the test works, right? Content is one thing, but also mm. preparation for the MCAT and the way the exam is itself and how it tests that con content is two different Great things. Examiners. And mm. so um, when it comes to the MCAT, right, uh, make sure you have practice exams in, make sure you're, um, if you have the content down, that you're actually test timing yourself with these, um, with, with practice exams, right? Right. Um, and, and honestly, uh, with uh, recommendation letters again, um, and even just doing well in class, I would say to, uh, make, make, make a, make an active connection with your professors, especially with, since we're online and with COVID going on, right. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Um, schools are start slowly starting to open up. I feel like that's one thing where faculty members, like, you know, you know, being, being a faculty member now, um, right. that's where. It's tough because students, like we, we as faculty members, want to know our students. Like, right. You know, so if it's an online course, like um, we we know when students aren't paying attention, when students mm -hmm. are meeting themselves and are just mm. it's easy to get distracted because, like, my last course, my last semester as a student was when the pandemic. Um, it was during the pandemic, right? Right. Uh, late 2020, um, and so I know how on online classes are and how it's easy to sort of check out like mentally and not be focused or tuned in, and yeah. so. Um, you know, making sure that you actively make a way to sort of participate in class and getting to know your professors and reach out to them, right? right. So that way they can make some report with you um, for recommendation letters. Right. Because if, you, if, you're a professor, if your professor doesn't know you, and I'm, I'm telling you because I've worked with professors, right? So I know how, yeah. how it is. Yeah. They don't feel comfortable writing a recommendation letter for you if they don't know you. If right. they've never met with you and if you've only taken the class with them, you need to you need to build a report with them. You need to be vulnerable to them. Mm -hmm. If you have if you have situations going on where things aren't working out, uh, you know, like things that may have been tough, like in your case, or things mm -hmm. have been tough in my case back in 2015 and stuff, um, talk to your professors about that. Right. Make yourself vulnerable because um there if 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 your if your instructor really cares, if they're really dedicated as most of the faculty I've come across at Lehman are. Right yeah. and do and have have shown that time and time again, like, like, like the individuals I mentioned, Dr. Henning, Dr. Dr. Williams, Dr. Mm -hmm. Calvin, yeah. Dr. Swanee, uh, Dr. Happeny from, uh, from the psych department, yeah. um, all all these in, and Dr. O'Connor, all these individuals, they they will um, try to help you. They Absolutely. they they want the best for their students. Um, they want to see you guys succeed, and so just making sure that you guys are you know taking take advantage of the resources available to you. Right, 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 right. Thank you, Abdul. Whew. Wow. Uh, Abdul, thank you for guys showing me to say everything. Thank you to Abdul for taking time out of his busy schedule. Busy, 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 busy schedule. Uh, and uh, this is about two hours now. Well, actually, uh, more than two hours because what you guys don't know is that before we actually start the episode, like there's a bunch of talking, right? Like us catching up and all that. So about three hours, right, uh, into this. And uh, Abdul, thank you. Appreciate it, man. And uh, December 20th, 2023. We right. seal it with the blood of Jesus, bro. That is that is my challenge to you. I want, I, bro. December twentieth, twenty twenty three. Let's meet up again. Whatever that just fell down. Let's meet up again, and by that and by that time, bro, you better have a YouTube channel, podcast channel, whatever it is. You You're by my side, good. bro. Yeah. I, you know each other as as being each, by each other's side and as collaborating on this again. Um, and as in med school. That's for sure, bro. We'll both That's for sure. Absolutely, That's bro. That's Absolutely. Bro. That's Absolutely. Bro. Absolutely. Thank you. You know what? Before we leave, share your social media platforms. Like, what is what are they? And like, I guess uh, your email so that like you know students can reach out and follow. So you. My social. Uh, so my email would be uh, a b d u l h a q s y e d at l c dot cuny dot edu. 
or at else uh, at lehman.cuny.edu, right? As soon as you reach out to me for whatever it is. Um, so I'll say it one more time, A-B-D-U-L-H-A-Q-S-Y-E-D at lehman.cuny.edu. Um, and so, yeah, if, if anyone has advice, wants to reach out to me, et cetera, um, they definitely can. For sure, bro. For sure, bro. What about Instagram? Instagram. Mm-hmm. Instagram is, is a different story. So that one is going to be, um, yeah. That one's a little unprofessional, but let's let's. It's let's, uh, hey, you gotta get those followers up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my yeah. my Instagram is going to be socially. So s o c i a l l y dot awkward h a q w a r d. All right, y'all. Hit up do up. I know you've been blessed by this. And on the next time, see you on the twelfth episode, which will be our last episode for season one. See you on that. Bye for now.